put together a 30 caliber um, pen that uses a real bullet and a real casing. You've seen these. These, these are not fake. These are real um, unfired casings is what I use. You can use uh, once fired casings. The neck is just a little bit loose, so you just have to know. Um, but uh, they're, 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 they're capable of being used also. Um, they make beautiful pens as remembrances for um, any military type funeral. Uh, those use uh, 30-06 uh, casings with crimps on the end. And so if you end up with any of those, all you have to do is part off the crimps and then you end up with uh, basically a 30-06 uh, casing and that's a longer casing than what I use. But fully capable of being turned into a uh, remembrance for a, uh, a, a funeral for a, uh, for a military member. Um, I've made several of them and uh, you can engrave those casings. I have the capability to do that. If that's something that you're interested in, contact me. But we're gonna go with a 308 casing. That's a 30 caliber. It's a little bit shorter. I like the look of the 308 more than I do the 30 out six. Like I said, the 30 out six is a little bit longer. Um, so you need a casing. You need a nib. And the nib of my choice is a real bullet that has been machined out to my specifications. So I used to buy copper projectiles and I like the look of them. I like the fact that there's no lead in them. So I don't have to have, I, I don't have the lead concerns um, and I don't have to melt the lead out, but I would stand at a lathe and these would take three, four, five minutes at a time to drill out um, and put the little uh, rabbit on the end of it here for the seven millimeter tube. So um, I contacted the uh, place that I was purchasing the uh, copper projectiles from and asked them if they could uh, produce something to my spec um, because I had the capability of doing it, but I didn't understand the, um, the orientation of this and that's proprietary and they couldn't share that. So I, uh, I asked them if they could modify some of their bullets to fit my, um, my need. And so I ordered several thousand of them to bring the price down. Um, but if you look closely, there is, a, there is a rabbit right there that a seven millimeter tube fits over perfectly. So now that seven millimeter tube in the bottom of that casing doesn't uh, doesn't drift and uh, you put a little bit of Loctite on the bottom of that and uh, it's going to stick. It's going to stick for a long, long time. So um, that's the secret here is you want a little bit of a shoulder um, cut into your your, uh, uh, your your bullet. You can sand it a lathe and cut these if you want to, but uh, you know, that takes time. We have these on our website. They're $3.95 a piece. You can buy them in bulk in larger quantities and they're less expensive. But you can see there that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's machined perfectly to fit a seven millimeter refill. So, um, so you need a casing and you need a nib. Other parts you need is a lower tube. Seven millimeter tube will work. You'll have to cut it off to size. You need an upper tube, and this again is a seven millimeter tube. Um, we sell a kit that comes with the upper tube, the seven millimeter refill, the um, finial to a um, Euro style or designer style pen. Uh, the differences with ours 
is the gold on this is gold titanium, not gold, not 24 karat gold. So gold titanium, you guys know, stands up much better, much longer, um, doesn't wear. And so uh, these are gold titanium. Um, and it comes with a seven millimeter trans transmission. So this entire kit, $2.95, gets you everything you need um, in that kit. Comes uh, all packaged up just like this. Um, so you have the tube, the refill, the finial, and uh, the transmission. All you need to add to that is a casing, a bullet, and uh, a tube. So we uh, a couple other things that you're going to need bushings. So we sell bushings. They come in a pop top. These are between center bushings. For those that aren't familiar with between center turning, it uh, shortens the distance so that if your um, two drive points are not uh, in direct alignment, you won't get as uh, your out of round will not be as pronounced. So um, between centers require a dead center in your head stock and a live center in your tail stock, just like any other drive. And they go in, your dead center drives one side, your live center spins on the other, and you turn, turn to size. These bushings are made specifically for me by Tim Geist to fit this kit in particular. So these are on our website also. Um, but if you don't want to spend that money on those, and you have a Euro finial bushing, you can use that. You put your finial towards that end. And if you have a 30 cal bolt action, you might be thinking to yourself, how are you gonna fit a seven millimeter tube on that 3 8 shoulder? Well, I'm not. I'm gonna turn it around backwards. All right, look closely at that. I turned it around backwards so that the shoulder is here, but I can still turn to size right there, right? They're the same size. So you can put that bushing on backwards. If you have a, a finial top for a designer or Euro and a 30 cal bolt action for the bottom, it'll work just fine for you. You don't have to buy the bushing set, but you know, the bushing set um, works great. All right, other things you need. You need some red Loctite. You need some CA. I use mercury. This is not the flex. This is uh, mercury medium. Um, I do a lot of work with templates in my shop. Um, so you're going to need, uh, this is, just a piece of aluminum. And what you'll see that I use it for is I take the bullet, I put it in there, and then I put my casing and I press my casing on till I contact my aluminum. Therefore, I get the same press distance every time on my bullet. So every casing that leaves my shop is the same. So um, once you determine the depth that you like, Drill yourself a piece of wood, a piece of aluminum, whatever, to that depth so that you can uh, always get the same, same press. The other thing you're going to see me use is this Frankenstein looking thing. Um, and this is to allow me to press my transmission to the proper depth without guessing. How many of you guys make slimline pens and you press to the second line like it tells you in the instructions and you come out and you're like, man, that needs just a little more press or oops, I pressed a little too far. Yeah, that's easy to pull back out, isn't it? Um, so you press a little bit more until you get just the right. Well, a smart man once on IAP by the name of Don Ward posted that uh, from the, uh, uh, to get the right extension, or the right exposure out of your uh, uh, seven millimeter refill, 
from the top of your transmission to the tip of your nib should be four inches. So with that said, from this point here, which I pressed to, and the edge of this is four inches. I milled this on my CNC. So you'll see how I use this later. But that little tidbit of advice right there, golden, four inches to a proper press. So uh, we'll see that put to test here in a little while. Um, and I need, I use a pen insertion tool uh, to uh, insert my tube once I, uh, once I press my bullet. So um, here's the chain of events you're gonna see. And that is I'm gonna leave here. I'm gonna go to my, um, my buffing station and I'm gonna buff me a casing. Like I said, I use 306, 308 casings. It's a 30 caliber. Uh, it's a little shorter than the 30 uh, .30 6 And so um, I just like the look of it a little bit better. Um, and you're gonna see how I buff those. And then I'm gonna go from the buffing station to my lathe where I'm gonna use a collet chuck and drill out the back of that, uh, the, the back of the casing. This one's been drilled. Um, I'm gonna drill out the back of that casing so it'll accept the seven millimeter tube and uh, I'm gonna press in the transmission. So basically, I'm making a seven millimeter pen here, which is, uh, you know, with a little bit of modifications. But uh, this should be interesting. So uh, let's head on over, over to the buffer. So here we are at our buffing station. We're gonna take the original casing. These are uh, unshot, uncleaned. Uh, they come uh, very coarse. Uh, you can see the heat marks on the, on the neck from the manufacturing. And uh, we need to hit them with this buffer. This is a uh, 3450 RPM buffer, um, Harbor Freight Special with Harbor Freight uh, um, buffing wheels on it. And uh, we need to get this uh, casing shined. So um, what do I use? I put gloves on. Sometimes when my gloves get worn and they start getting holes in them, I'll put rubber gloves underneath to keep my fingers clean. But these gloves are fairly new. They're not, uh, they're not uh, holy like the other ones. And what you need is a punch, the size that just fits inside the neck of the, uh, of the casing. Because this casing, you need something to hold on to, and that's the, uh, th that's the punch. And this, this casing will spin on here as it buffs. Um, I've got my buffing compound in the bottom here, so let's buff up a couple tubes. So this is just standard uh, rough polish, and this is uh, white diamond polish on the right tube, or on the right. So I just take my take my casing, and it's thin. They're spinning, and you can see how much more clean it is now. That right there, very clean. We'll get a better look at it over on the other table. So I'll buff up a couple of these, it doesn't take long. So again, put it on here, and I let it. Let it spin a little bit. Sorry for the noise, but uh, that's it right there. That's a uh, that's some polish on that casing, and uh, it does create heat. That's why I wear the gloves. So uh, just be careful when you're doing this. Um, eye protection, ear protection, and uh, go from there. All right, so our next piece is 
to after we're buffed to get a hole in the back end of the uh, casing so that we can um, put a uh, transmission in a tube in it. So we're just going to take our uh, casing, we're going to put it in our collet chuck and tighten down the collet chuck. And my lead up opposite the um, and then we'll slide the seven millimeter uh, drill bit up to the uh, end of the end of the casing, and tighten it down. That way, it self-centered itself, so that we know we're going to drill the center of this tube or the set casing, and just slowly advance. You can see the shape coming clean. Make sure your drill bit sharp. All right, we're through. Back out. Back before you back your tail piece of tail stock away. And then we're gonna take out our casing, and there you go. You have a uh, seven millimeter hole in your casing that'll now take uh, so that you can insert a uh, seven millimeter tube and a uh, and a seven millimeter transition transmission. All right, we're back from drilling. Um, we have a uh, 308 casing with a uh, hole in the back of it that's been buffed to a uh, bright shine. Um, I don't use anything on the casings. Leave them to patina. You want them to patina. You don't want them to patina. You can put a little Ren Wax on and it'll stop it from turning as quickly. If it does turn, a little bit of uh, um, you know, tarnish remover uh, will uh, will work wonders on so, um just remove length from the top before you uh, choose a metal or anything like that. But that'll clean these casings up uh, really quickly. So um, first things first, I use a uh, Arbor Press. Uh, this is a one ton press, I believe. I know it's from Harbor Freight. I believe it's a one ton, but uh, works great for what I'm doing. It uh, presses straight and that's, uh, that's the key. So as I said, I have a, uh, a template here, a jig, that I use. So I put this on my Arbor Press. I put my bullet in it. And I'm gonna take my casing. And just to make sure I don't get any, any movement, I'm gonna take my medium CA and just put a little dab in the, uh, in the neck of this thing. I mean, just a little. Just enough that when you uh, press this in, It'll hold. So, so I press down until I hit the aluminum, and there we go, right there. There is my there is my press that I press to. Um, uh, you know, that's my design that I use. So now I always turn them upside down so that any excess CA runs away from the uh, the neck on the bullet. If you remember, there's a neck there. So. Next thing is take my seven millimeter tube and these are shortened. I again had these made in bulk for me. Um, so I have the right size lower tube. Um, your lower tube will vary based on the amount of press that you press this in. So um, I always test fit. So I put my tube on the end of my insertion tool and make sure that no kidding, my uh, uh, my tube will go over my case, my uh, bullet, and it does. It slipped right on in there. So uh, sometimes you might get glue caught up in that, and if you do, it's going to be hard. You just got to press through it and break it apart. Um, so now comes the fun part, where you have to be a little ambidextrous. So I have two, I have two pieces that I have to put glue and um, uh, Loctite on. So if you remember, the inside of this tube goes over top of the neck on the bullet. On the bullet. So my point of contact or the place I wanna glue is the inside of this tube, I wanna put a little Loctite in. 
So um, I'll take and uh, just put a little, little dab of Loctite. The more you put in, the more you're going to wipe out later. And I'm just going to show you how I wipe it out. And then I take the take this and I roll it 180 degrees. That way the Loctite starts flowing down around the other pieces of the tube. Now the next part, I'm going to put glue on the inside of this casing because that's where my glue joint is. And then I'm going to run glue down the outside of this one because again, that's where my glue joint is. So I have the tube in my hand and I'm going to roll it. You see how I'm rolling there. I'm going to roll the tube as I apply the CA to the inside of this. Put CA down the tube and now I'm going to insert it. And the fun part, because sometimes it's hard to get it off of the insertion tool, right? So I find my place where it inserts down over top of that and I'm spinning, spinning, trying to take the glue and spread it out on all those glue areas. And now I start rocking my insertion tool back and forth and, and it did come out. So I wipe the top of my tube and then I take my Q-tip um, and I run it down into the, into the blank and wipe out all that excess um, Loctite that was in there because I don't want excess Loctite or CA in the bottom of this. And then I blow a little bit through, a little bit of air through it to make sure that the, uh, it, make sure the hole is clear. And I set it on its lid right there and let it cure for a little bit. It's uh, medium CA, so it does take a little bit to cure. So as that's curing, I'll cap up all my stuff because I don't have anything else to glue. That's that's the whole, that's the joint right there. Um, you glued it in just like a seven millimeter tube. Set those to the side. All right, so now I do have a little bit of proudness on this tube. So I take my chamfering tool. Um, these are awesome things to have in the shop. Um, it's a uh, tool used for hunting and uh, um, really for uh, uh, reloading and stuff like that, but it, it's got an inside chamfer and an outside chamfer. So I use the inside chamfer and I just work this tube until I get down even with my, uh, the back end of my casing. It was sticking out just a little bit proud. And as I cut down, it uh, you may not be able to see it on the screen, but there's little specks down here because I'm actually cutting away tube and creating a chamfer on the inside of this. So there we go. Um, it's now flush, and that's what you're looking for. So if you used a seven millimeter tube, you're gonna have to cut it off and then chamfer it, uh, chamfer it flush. So now the moment of truth. Did I, did I leave any glue in there? Did anything stick inside? I take my seven millimeter transmission and I insert it and it goes in without any trouble. So there's uh, you know, it's, it's a clear path for uh, uh, the next step. Next step, I need a transmission. This is where my, uh, my measurement tool comes in. And uh, so now I uh, take my transmission. Oh, gotta pull it out of the package. Didn't pull it out. Just a second. So I take my transmission and I set it in the back end of the, the, the uh, bullet. All right. I put it on my uh, measuring device. Hopefully you can see that. And now, I press until I reach the, uh, the top of my uh, template, my jig. That ensures that from here to here is four inches exactly. And when I put my 
refill in, I get good uh, extension to the right length. And when I retract it, it retracts fully. So um, this little device here, this four, four inch thing, um, that'll work on any kit. Any, any kit that uses a seven millimeter transmission, you can, you can press the seven or four inches, no problem, right? So there you go. That's it for the lower assembly is what I call this. Your lower assembly is complete. That was pretty simple actually. So um, for the kit, like I said, I have all the parts in gold titanium for $2.95. The bullet itself is $3.95. If you buy in bulk, which is 10, 25, 50, or 100, the price goes down the more you buy. Um, and so now, after you turn your blank, right, we talked about the, uh, um, the bushings that were needed. Now I need to just make this into a, into a blank. And that if you ever made a Euro, they come with a small little nut that gets pressed into the finial. And then the clip goes over that and the, uh, um, the, the finial itself screws into the finial nut so that it, uh, you know, it's a round top is what they call it. So, this does have a correct side to go in first, and that's the one with the little indentation. So I set that in the end of my blank. Come over to my arbor press and press it down until it's flush. There we go, it's flush. I take my clip and I put it on there. And I tighten down my round top finial. There we go. That's an Iwo Jima blank, by the way. So, and then you put it on the blank. There we go. There's your there's your final pen. Um, if you take and have somebody that uh, served during Iwo Jima, and you have their casings from their funeral. Uh, you, you can make a uh, you can make a pretty good remembrance piece, or you can cast a special blank on the top that says something that me that is meaningful for the family. But uh, that's a uh, that's a 30 caliber casing pen made with a real casing and a real bullet. If uh, you didn't understand anything, or I skipped over something, you think uh, send me a message. Come into our room. Uh, chat with us and uh, we'll, we'll try to uh, set the record straight and uh, set you in the right direction to be able to make your own. But these make excellent little gifts and uh, hopefully you can from just this little bit be able to go out now and make one. So um, good luck. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you have any questions contact us. Thank you. What? <laughs>